because I wanted to be able to be around more people and to be able to be, um, you know, reaching more people and talking to more people in the community. And to, to have somebody like this is great training ground for me because, you know, I have for so long been able to really choose who I get to be around. And so I've been really practicing more with just continuing to like allow myself to be myself when I'm around her. And, you know, the other night it actually got to a point where I had just been continuing to do that like all night until she actually directed her, her anger and victimization towards me. And it hurt, you know, it hurt. Like, so I can understand that feeling of like, like being punched in the heart. Like it just, it, it sucks when you're doing all you can to really just to, bring your love out of you and give it to other people and to have people just kind of attack you. But that's, that's sort of the energy physics of it though. You know, so if you want to look at it from that dark light paradigm, you can see that, you know, the more you turn on the light in the room, the more the darkness flees and and hates it and just is so disgusted by it and just doesn't want it because it's uncomfortable and it's different and boo, (laughs) you know, like that kind of stuff. And I could feel that in her. And I know I was annoyed and bothered at first and I took it in myself and I was like, all right, so that happened. And it's not that I just laid down and played dead. Like I I matched her back and, and I was very clear back and I wasn't angry back. I didn't hate her back, but I definitely stood up and was like, you know, I know you have this problem with me and I will do better to be more attentive to it and in the future, but I, I didn't cower. And that was really new for me because in the past I would have just, like you said, Max just bottled it up and just stuffed it away and, you know, gotten the stomach ache later or the headache later or whatever, and just kind of pushed it aside. But that, but, that is what? Well, yeah, you know, and if you can, if you can express it at the, at, at the moment, then you find that you don't hang on to it. But if you can express it and not hang on to it, not hold grudges, it really helps. You know, your emotions are there for a reason, so you should embrace them, you know? Yeah, it totally. Does. I just got, I just got a very interesting synchronistic ref- reflection right now that just popped up. Remember that conversation I was telling you about where people are getting butt hurt? Um, someone responded saying, Allow me to hazard a guess, okay? The fearful calling out that you, you be a doing, that'll be from the safety of a Facebook platform, right? We already have white knights and social justice warriors. Now, now we are going Facebook paladin. Grow the fuck up and concentrate on holding yourself to standards instead of others. If their doings hurt your poo-poo, your cho- choices, and you stop following them, which uh, you won't because then you can't hang upside down in your Facebook bat cave, or a large, <laughs> a large jar of butt paste. And I, I just simply respond, responded. I said, well, come to Chicago then and let's not only, no, not only have an in-person discussion, but live streaming video on YouTube as well. So let's come out of arcades together, you game. And I'm not even kidding. Anybody who wants to meet up in person and, you know, like maybe get together at a restaurant that's got some Wi-Fi or something, hook in, do a live, a live stream from a cafe and talk face to face. You know, get a hold of me. You know, let's let's meet up at you know the Burgundy or whatever, and you know, let's have that physical reality in person conversation. If people like Jock Looch, that's his name, J A C L O O C H. You know, if people like him feel so adamant that it's so horribly wrong to express yourself on the internet and that it's a form of hiding, well, that's cool come out of hiding then i'm happy to, to meet anyone anywhere not for a fight for a civil discussion but you know if they if they think that it's 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 only not hiding if it's in person then cool what you know anybody yeah, who wants well, to do that hit, hit me hit me up let's have some coffee and talk well yeah people should get involved in the real world that's why i'm out doing what i do i get out and i speak to people you know i go to gaza i do what i can to to make a difference you know we've got too many clicktivists out there and not enough activists so yeah Get involved in the real world. That's what people need to do. The real world still exists outside the computer screens, folks. That's, yeah, exactly why I decided to go be more in the real world and have to deal with people in the real world. Because, uh, you know, for so long I had been doing just stuff on the Internet and doing my art and helping people and all that. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's good. You can reach a lot of people. and, and Yeah, it, but you need to be really grounded, to too. get out of the real world. I mean, and a lot of people say, oh, look at Max. He's out there traveling around the world living this high lifestyle. It's not like that. I'm couch surfing, living, you know, from day to day most of the time, you know, skimping meals and you know, going without sleep, doing ridiculous amounts of travel to go and speak at gigs that I don't get paid for. So, you know, mm-hmm. just to try to wake people up. So it isn't like it's this glamorous thing. But 
And there comes a point where you've, you've actually got to get involved in the world that you live in. It isn't just an online world, you know. You know, we sit there in our own little social groups. And with all the algorithms they've got now, you're only really reaching your group. You're only really preaching to the choir very often online. And I still have people now who come saying, oh, my God, I've just discovered you. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. How have they just discovered me? Because it's all so suppressed, you know. Right. So you've got to get out in the real world and get involved. And the amount of re- incredible responses I have from people uh, going and speaking at these conferences and just, you know, go to a, a place where they've got a soapbox. So like in London, you can go down to Hyde Park and just get up on the soapbox and just have your, your spiel and see who gathers around to listen. These sorts of things help. Just get out there and get involved in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for, with that, you, it requires a lot of ability to be able to hold your own and have that interpersonal sense of sovereignty. I think a lot of people, like I know myself, for I was very afraid of getting out in the real world for so long because of my own abuse and trauma and all of that. And it, it just was like, I'd rather do anything besides do that because there's no Facebook block button in the real yeah. world. Yeah, <laughs> that's the hard thing. That's, that's something that I often... That's something that I often forget. I mean, most people's greatest fear, I suppose, is public speaking, which is a, is a weird uh-huh. for me because I've, I've spent most of my life on stage as a guitar player, so I'm, I'm quite comfortable in front of a crowd. It's kind of weird speaking in front of a crowd, I suppose, but I don't really have a problem with it. So I guess I find it difficult to imagine why other people would have a problem simply opening up and saying what they're <coughs> Oh, hey, by the way, this guy just backed out. <laughs> he said, no fucktard, I'll stay in the U.S., how about you come down t- t- Tennessee way and I'll show you. I'm not even going to read the rest of this. It. just blah, 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 blah. But I said, yes, you caught me. Chicago is in North Korea. LOL, LOL, LOL. So, yeah, I'm like I don't even I, I've no desire to even fight with these people. I just laugh at these people. They say something crazy like I'll stay in the U.S. when I, I'm in Chicago. It's like, all right, yeah, you caught me. Chicago's in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, and at the risk of, of sounding racist, and by the way, my origins, part of them are from Tennessee and Oklahoma and the South, not that this guy would know. But um, yeah, at the risk of sounding, oh my God, racist, I'll just say that this guy's a stupid, stereotypical um, redneck, and um, people like him are why the stereotype exists, and I'll go no further on that. If someone thinks I'm racist, so be it. People think I'm racist, just me saying hi. And because I'm white, you know, oh, being white in and of itself is racist. Welcome to George Orwell's world, you know. Oh, my God. It's so funny. I, I just, it's great. I am i can't help but laugh, honestly. I can't even get mad anymore. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting. This is, this is the problem, though, is that we, we constantly, we're constantly attacking and baiting each other. And we are, it's just a squabbling mess. You, know, you look at the response to the system. It's just a squabbling mess of people shouting each other down. You know, um, shouting any ideas anybody else has down. Oh, that's a silly idea. You're an idiot, you know. Um, or rather than trying to expand on it or offering something better. And, you know, we don't have the common focus of freedom is the problem. We're too busy fighting over our different details, over our different rabbit holes, our different belief systems. You know, the ruling cacistocracy who are running us into the ground, they agree to disagree on just about everything. But they have the focus of achieving complete human lockdown. And they are very, very focused on achieving that. But we do not have any common focus on achieving emancipation from slavery. We all have our different rabbit holes and we nitpick. You know, if you could, if you can imagine it as a, as a, as a, uh, a graphic or something, you know, you'd have this one coordinated group on one side and just this mishmash of infighting and people destroying each other on the other. And if all of those people that were fighting and destroying each other could just turn and face the system for one day, we could bring the whole system down in one day. You know, if we simply stop complying with it, I've been saying this for years, you know, if we just withdraw all support from this system, you imagine if no one in the world used a credit card for a day, Wall Street would crash. The entire financial system would go into absolute chaos. All the people sitting in, in those big, um, you know, stock market exchanges looking at the numbers would be going, oh my God, the numbers aren't changing. What am I going to do? What's happened to my life? The numbers aren't moving on the screen. They just, they would freak out. The whole system would freak out if we stopped complying with it. But we, we don't. We, we do all these things that the system tells us to do. We march in the street and end up in violent confrontations with the police because that's the way they push it. We petition the government. We ask them to please be a nicer slave master. You know, what are we doing? I mean, these are just people. They're just people who, who just write all this stuff on paper and we just do what we're told. It's ridiculous. You know, and we, we try all these, these violent actions and methods they give us to stop it. Like I said, we should just stay home. If the whole world stayed home, what are they going to do? What can they do? Come to send the police to your house and tell you that you're breaking the law by spending the day with your family? I yeah. mean, you know, there's nothing they can do if we stop complying. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. 
We there's not any, there's not there's not enough jails, police, or, or anything to process everybody. As a no. matter as a matter of fact, I wish they would literally try to arrest everybody. At yeah, once. I mean that's what I mean. There's the nothing pa- the nothing pa- they the could paperwork, do. The paperwork alone would grind the system to a halt. It's incredible. <laughs> People can't see the simplicity of non-compliance. It's it's really that simple. You know, total non-compliance, just refused to comply. I mean, kill what it. if they showed up through a war and nobody <laughs> came? Kill it, with, kill it with their own red tape. Just just the non-compliance alone would create so much red tape that the system would implode it on yeah, itself. You know, it's a, so I'm trying to promote that for the 15th of every month, and let's see if we can build the numbers, and hopefully a year from now we'll have millions of people doing it, and then we can just say, okay, well, let's do it today, and then if we don't bring out a difference, let's continue it to tomorrow and the next day and the next mm-hmm. day. Hey, Matt, so, by the way, um, quick question. I know you've been busy, I've been busy, et cetera, I haven't had a chance to ask this, really. Um, I noticed that, you know, for when you're a guest on other shows and stuff, that that some sometimes you're able to put it up and sometimes not. How can I get you my content, like, um, sh- that, you know, you to upload to your channel that, you know, for when well, you've I been just, on I my show? I just download it. If I do an interview with someone, I just download it from their YouTube and re-upload it to mine or I get the MP3 and do it. It's been depending on bandwidth. I mean, half, yeah. half the shows, half the interviews I'm on, I post on my channel. Half of them I don't. It just depends on where I am and what yeah. bandwidth I've got and how much time I've got. Totally understandable. That's what I was just asking if there's, a, if there's any way I can, I can help you, like, you know, like get the snail mailing you a disc with, with it or yeah, like, I move, like, I, I move around so much. It's hard <laughs> to get a mail it to you. That's the problem you yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious. It'll, it'll if there's work, any, yeah. I was just curious if there's anything I I could do to help in that regard because I'm always happy to assist in any way I can. So. Well, you know, we'll just see. I don't like giving anyone access to my channel, so we'll just. I understand. We'll just see. Um, but it'll it'll work out. Everything works out in the end. I understand. I'm just you know, only about happy half to help. the interviews I do get get uploaded. Probably about about two thirds of them I even post. Some of them I I, I do and I, I can't even remember the stations. <laughs> I don't get the audio and people, I don't know whether people hear it or not, but yeah. there's probably, probably, um, 20 interviews that I've done in the last, um, year or two years that, that I haven't posted at all. So oh, but, somewhere. So, you know, by, 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 the, by the way, um, just a quick update. I, I think I shut this guy up. Um, you know, he responded say, saying like, Oh shit, cargo, call that us. And I said, like I said, you caught me. Chicago's in North Korea. Duh, everyone knows that. And I said, I write Swiss cheese, write Kim Jong Un, oh, nuclear diarrhea, oh, my soul asshole. LOL, LOL, LOL. You respond to people like that. They don't know what to do. You're being lighthearted. You're just being funny and silly. You're not falling for their bullshit. And sooner rather than later, they just give up because you end up being a dry well. I mean, I just kind of, you know, paradigm shift and educational comedy, like, that's half the point. Not only is it easier for people to, to learn when things are entertaining, obviously, but it's hard for, for people to, to, to goad you and bait you and, and, you know, lock you into that psychopathic meme if you're sitting there just in a good freaking mood no matter what and just looking at it for what it is and just being like, okay, well, they're funny, so I'll just be funny back. And then they'll shut up because I just blue screen of death their brain. It's, it's, it's another one of those simple ways to, um, to fight tyranny that, like you said, people don't know it's so simple. You know, in and of itself, it's a form of non-compliance to, to not comply with hate to just be like okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna laugh and if the other person is <coughs> hateful then you know cool yeah well I, I don't hate the people that i i come back at sometimes i just i just do it out of pure frustration yeah it's just pure frustration like oh my god another one you know okay you want to give me a mouthful have one back have a nice day goodbye yeah and well i've got a different attitude now when i say have a nice day to people you realize <laughs> the etymology of the word nice you know, which means to be ignorant, stupid, and uninformed. So, um, yeah, you know, nice, nice means to be stupid, means to be ignorant, means to be uninformed, means to not know. That's the origins of the word. So when I say to people, yeah, have a nice day, I'm kind of saying, yeah, we'll just, just continue on being a drone. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, sometimes you've got to give it back a little bit, and, and you just want to, but I, I do it out of frustration. I, really, <laughs> I mean, I think if we, we could um, just... I mean, if you see something that someone says and you think, oh, look, that's a silly idea, but, you know, there's something to it that could work, be nice to them when you talk to them about it. Offer some expansion on the idea. Don't just go and throw someone into a hole, 
tell them what you think of them, call them some name or whatever, and don't offer anything constructive. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Oh, well, spe oh, oh speaking of which, he just resorted to just calling me a faggot. And I just said, oh, of course I'm a faggot. <laughs> I, I, just said, I just said, of course I'm a faggot. What else could I be? He's getting real frustrated. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's it's just an energy exchange, and, and it's the wrong energy. It's from people being disconnected from source. So they've got to do this. They've got to attack you like this and just keep baiting you. And when you try to point it out to them, they just keep going, and it becomes this energy thing. And then you find you're getting sucked into it as well. And you find there's energy strings that are connecting you to Exactly. It's just this energy harvest that you're getting off each other. And really, you're only doing it because you're disconnected from source. Totally. That's that's why I laugh, because it's not worth getting energetically engaged. It's it's more worth my time to just laugh it off. Because well, yeah, you know, if you it's can, unimportant. If you're going to post an insult to someone, post it in such a way that it, maybe it's, it's constructive for someone else to read it. Um, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Even when, when I post insults to people, I try to make them so over the top that they become humorous. So. Oh yeah, exactly. By by the by the way, you know you know you know what my like my favorite comeback of all of all time is as long as we're on the topic. It, it, it's funny because it's silly and people don't know what to say. If you respond saying you bloody afterbirth of a lesbian clusterfuck, like <laughs> like, like how is anybody supposed to come back to that? I know the first well, time, yeah. the, the, the first time it was used on me, I was like what. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, I didn't even, like, I was paralyzed. I didn't even know how to respond because it's like, how do you respond to something that ridiculous and that silly? <laughs> well, yeah, at least, you know, funny creative insults can be somewhat constructive in some way, but I, I don't know about that one. It's a little bit, uh, bit I, it's, I know, it's, 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 it's very crass, but a lot of the funniest stuff is. Some things are funny just be, just because they're so crass and stupid, you know? Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. I can agree. Yeah, he he, tr he tried he tried replying um, again. I'm just going to respond with, "Ask me on a date already." <laughs> but um, I'm going to have to go soon because uh, it's getting close up to two o'clock. I've got to do some stuff at two o'clock. Yeah, I'm I'm I just love all this touring you're doing, Max, and I'm really sorry that the rock the farm thing isn't going to work out. I know um, you said Andy's having some. So I'm glad you like it. It's really draining on me, but I'm glad you like it. Hey, you know what? I I, I I hope that eventually you make enough money on Patreon so that it's not so draining, so that you know you can um, do things more in a bit of an, an ease and flow way. That's um that's that's easier on you. Speaking I'd love, speaking I'd of which, to, I'd love to be able to get an assistant. I really would. I'd love to be able to afford to pay one, and I'd love to be able to afford to not have to do all the stuff that I do, you know, it's been really hard. It really has. I mean, YouTube's suppressing everything. I've never, I've never uh, monetized my account. And seeing, you know, and seeing as you have, is the Patreon that I set up for you is really kind of your only bread and butter right now. Why don't you put that out there before we forget and Katarina can put hers out there to anybody that wants to support her. Let's, uh, seeing as we're kind of coming to, uh, to the end because you're running out of time, let's, let's get all that information out, out there and, you know, if anybody wants to, wants to be of, of help, you know, as little as, as a dollar a month. I mean, I've, uh, uh, you know, PSEC has a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash PSEC media. Max is forward slash Max Egan, you know, patreon.com forward slash Max Egan, and Katarina's is um, forward slash uh, Katarina Roy, right? Yep. Yeah, so, um, you know. Well, you'll find everything on the Crow House, my website, thecrowhouse.com. You'll find all the links to all that there, so. Yep. Yeah, but thanks for, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, I just, right. I, I just wanted to make sure to mention it. You could also find Katarina's on katarinaroy.com as well. Um, she's got a, a, a website with lots of interesting stuff, and um, your Patreon's linked on there too, isn't it, Katarina? Yes, it is. Yep, thought so. Thought so. Uh, Kristen, and I'm pretty sure Kristen doesn't have a YouTube, or excuse me, a Patreon, but I know she's got a YouTube. Um, forward slash Chrissy Sparkle, I think? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cute. How, how, do you, how do you spell that? It's K R I S S Y Sparkle. Okay. Called normally. And um, uh, Kristen, is there obviously because we're kind of winding down on the time here? Um, anything else uh, you know you want to say about all this that didn't get said? Because obviously all all of us talk quite a bit, and we all have a lot to say. So. Uh, well, I wanted to just say that um, I appreciate what you said, Max, about focusing more on love, letting that be what guides you instead of you know hate. That is something that. I have been doing, although to me, I'm just, when I said what I did, I'm just trying to be authentic with the fact that there, I don't even know if I, 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 I know exactly what you, I know exactly what you meant, darling. I really do. It's just the, the, the thing of, 
and I've done it as well. This is I didn't mean to interrupt, but as I've done it as well, is, is, and the problem is that the system itself is just a meme. So all of that energy that you're focusing on it in, in a form of hatred, it's just going nowhere. It's just dissipating. It's just disempowering you because you're not focusing it against something that actually exists. It's just an idea, you know. And, um, and that's a all, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, and I also, I totally see what you're saying. And sometimes it is, even though I get that, it is hard for me to separate it as, you know, it's just something, it's uh, like it's a meme. It's a program that exists in our minds. And then that kind of, at the same time of that, that just like kind of jolts me awake and I'm like, okay, then it really sinks in that, yeah, just because these people have power, they only have power because we believe it. And that always, I just find that idea so interesting. And I also like what... And they confound Mm -hmm. us with the language as well. When you're trying to talk to them about it, they're being so polite and giving you absolutely no leeway at all. And they're confounding Mm -hmm. you with the language. And I've done whole shows about that as well. But you can do the same back to them. If you learn how to talk in a nice, calm, polite way, you can ask them questions which will actually have them absolutely squirming and you can educate people around you while you're doing it. But anyway, continue, please. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Sorry. Well, it's okay. You're, I, I like what you say. I do find that interesting, and Dave's taught me a lot about that, about really using the dipl- diplomacy as a really good tool. And, you know, yeah, they can talk you in circles and the whole political correctness and the, the courtesy. They, you could just talk in circles and never get answers. And that's a lot of what happens, you know, when people question politicians. They just talk up this beautiful painting and then... Uh, you realize that there's there's no meat to it, and they just talked in a giant circle. But um, the biggest thing that I think is really going to help me more, and this is kind of what Katarina's been doing, is just more in-person interaction with people and kind of forging a sense of community with people, connecting a little more. I've also been kind of going hermit mode, and I'm learning to accept that that's the thing about my mood. And um, I'm coming out of a depression as of right now, and like when I'm depressed, it's really hard for me to even talk to close friends. So the idea of going out and being the change and inspiring people has been something I've had no energy for and I've had no idea of how to even begin. But now I'm kind of seeing um, I can chill and some days I'm not going to want to be in the mood for that, but other days maybe I am going to be and I have more courage about it now. So I'm really getting tired of wasting my whole day on Facebook and yeah, there's been a lot that I've learned from it, but I'm so ready to move forward out of that. And I think it's really, that reminder has been really good. Yeah, well, you know, be, be, be a shining light, Alan. Be a shining light to your family and your people around you and lead by example in what you do. And don't don't take a backward step to them. Stand your ground, but be nice about it. If they're ordering you around to do things, well, just question this authority that they seem to think they have over you and, and, and treat them as an equal, and you'll find that that will provide a huge awakening for them. So you will be making a difference in the world simply by changing the way you feel about yourself and the way you interact with those that are closest to you. That is also something that I haven't, part of me was buying into society's ideas of success and where I have to be. It, for one thing, not only does it make me have a sense of dread as where I am right now, because I'm not, I don't know all the answers of where I'll end up. It makes me really scared. But also it's been that I have to have this grandiose idea of where I'm going to end up and the kind of impact I'm going to have on people that I've just been neglecting and discounting the impact that I have on the people closest to me. When in reality, that is like, That closeness and that level of impact that I have over a few people is so meaningful that who knows how deeply I can impact them and they can impact me and how much us supporting each other could really go, you know, how far it could go. And, yeah, like what you said about kind of asking questions to maybe my family if, you know, they're asking something of me that's a little much, that has been very relevant. It's a very – it's a good thing because I've let my anger get out of control sometimes. And it just spirals and, like, nothing productive comes out of it. And now I'm just like, ugh, I can swallow my ego enough to where I want product something productive to be what comes. I don't want to be... Hey, Kristen? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, on topic and everything, this big paradigm shift in educational comedy and things going the way they go. Um, I, I just have to update you on something here that's hilarious. Um... Um, kind of, kind of, kind of a disclaimer, because because what I what I said is a bit <laughs> disgusting, but um, you know, this guy's like, oh, there'll be a crush, all right. And he's starting to like do, he's trying to play the violence card, right? So I res- I respond to that saying, your manliness is a turn on. Come stick your man meat into my ignorant, stupid mouth, mm, hearts. Uh, usually people like him are very homophobic. I'm not gay, obviously, but just playing that. 
kind of card usually shuts them down because they they, they don't want to face themselves. They don't want to face their insecurities. They just want to, you know, bash everybody else and lash out. So sometimes just a quick little just a quick little thing like that will make will make, will make them face themselves and they'll be like, oh man, now I got to face myself. But listen, I think that was a, that was a beautiful talk, um, uh, Katrina. It really was. Um, uh, Kristen, 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 sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Uh, two, two Ks. It's all right. wrong. Two Ks. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. That was very heartfelt. Um, little yeah. talk just gave them, but I'm, I'm going to have to run folks because it's quite okay. Not a problem. Uh, this was, this is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. This is beautiful. And, and, and I just, I love having these conversations with you guys and everybody says just such brilliant and true stuff. And it's just, it's just, it's just really just the energy of these types of, of conversations is just really awesome. And um, uh, Richard Hamilton would have been here, but um, he's uh, in school today. He's uh, training to be, um, you know, an EMT, um, fire and, and rescue, and you know, all of all of that stuff. So um, he's he's in class. No worries. Well, I've got to go. Um, Not a problem. Love you all. Absolute pleasure to talk to you, Dave. You too, Katarina, and you too, uh, Kristen. Yeah. And, um, Teddy, I'm not going to see you in Ohio, but I'm sure we'll catch up again one day. And a- absolutely. I'll look to, to you next time. Oh yeah, totally. This is this has been absolutely great, and you know, thank thank you all so much for for coming on. This has just been absolutely freaking wonderful, and I love it. So thank you all so much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Now the rest of us could stay on for a little bit. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know, really matter. Max, Max can go, and and we can wrap up what we want to wrap up, but. I, I just think that that all the synchronicities that uh, that have been happening during this thing, starting with the uh, w- with the malfunctions, all the way uh, way up to like whoever the heck you know this person is. Like I didn't even read most of what this person said to me because it's wholly irrelevant, and I I don't need to waste our time or the listeners' time with with crap like that. But I just kind of pointed out the highlights because it was so synchronistic. I mean, you know, we're talking about unconditional love and being tolerant and so on and so forth. And, like, of all the times for someone like this to pop up, you know, like, I can't ignore the synchronicity of it. It's just it really it really is that practical application of unconditional love. Because, like we're saying, you know, love isn't all Pollyanna bunnies kitties. Sometimes it's just like... Just like, you know, acknowledging, hey, that person's a jerk and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm refusing to fall, you know, in, into their trap. I'm not going, I'm not going to get sucked in, you know, to their shit. And, you know, you can be annoyed about it and whatever and still not get sucked into their shit. And I think this is just one of those perfect examples of, hey, you know, some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy and, and that's that's on them. That's not on you. Who you decide to be is up to you. And I decided to be someone who is just laughing at this and finds it funny. That's my choice. That's my taking personal responsibility and owning my emotions. This person, who is he to me anyway? He's got no power over me unless I let him. Who is he to me? Nobody. So I think that's that's very just it was just very synchronistically you know important. And just just showing that when people like this pop up, you don't you don't have to let them ruin your day. That's what they want. People like that come in and try to energetically vampire you, and they're trying to ruin your day. They get off on it. But if you don't let them, what can they do? Honestly, what can they really do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that's pretty pretty interesting. Um, so what else has been up with uh, both of both of you that um, maybe there wasn't enough time to say that you want to get out there? I know we've all been having some very interesting experiences lately. So anything actually, else you, you want to share? I actually, while I was listening to you guys talk, an article came up on Facebook about um, 20 manipulation tactics that narcissistic abusers will do. And I'm like, holy shit, the lady at work does like so many of these. So... I think that this is a really good thing for me because I'm going to be going and talking to the owner of the company tomorrow. And uh, it's just nice to have some stuff to back it up as to why I don't want to work the same shift as her. Yeah, totally. I mean, you've you've also shared a lot of um, <clears throat> really good articles about narcissism and has, have even wrote your own. Um, if people go to... KatarinaRoy.DeviantArt.com and then go into her journal section. Um, there's at least one or one or two in there about, um, you know, deal, dealing 
with narcissists, and then they link to to other uh, journals and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm a little otherwise preoccupied because I'm about ready to go too, but I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, Kristen, any anything you want to share? I know you've been uh, you've been facing uh, quite a bit of stuff too. Um, I've had this weekend after having like one of the scariest moments of my life. I had the best weekend in a long time. Nice. And yeah, for a lot of different reasons, um, including talking to you and Katarina, I've had so much hope and I've been able to deal with like issues with programming and deep fears and insecurity and just depression and anger coming up in such a different way than I ever have. Right Um, on. High five. Totally. Yeah. And it feels so good. Like for example, today's been a really triggering day for me. Um, and of course, you know, there's going to be some contrast after having that good of a weekend. Also Schumann resonance stuff happened yesterday or on uh, Sunday, so I've, I've just yeah. been noticing there's been, like, this period of just, like, intense triggering. Totally. Yeah, oh. like, I got in a little bit of trouble with the law. My boyfriend and I got a citation, but, like, it's been so different. And today I found out um, stuff that happened a, a little bit ago that I'm here finding out about now that's bringing up some deep fear in me and insecurity. But it's, like... I am so beyond the point now of, well, I'm not so beyond the point, but I'm to the <coughs> point where I don't want to let that shit, like, dictate my every move. I don't want to go from the place of self-destruction because I'm lashing out anymore. Like, I, I'm i really just, like, normally if I was in this bad mood, not only would I have probably hurt myself a little bit and, um, you know, been, like, just a shut-in, I wouldn't have tried to talk to you guys at all. Now I'm just, like, I feel terrible and... It has not been a good day, but, like, instead of pushing away friends, I've decided to talk to friends. It's stuff like that makes mm-hmm. a difference. Yeah, totally. Oh, um, by the, by, the, by the way, just briefly, um, that, that guy replied a big, long thing that I'm not going to read, but um, this one part said, just have to thank you for not serving, okay? And I responded saying, serve me your chalk in my mouth. Ew. <laughs> I'm trying my best to gross this guy out. I really am. <laughs> Again, nothing against gays. I'm not gay, whatever. Whoever's gay, that's cool. That's your thing. I'm not bashing. I'm just really, really seeing if I can gross this guy out. Like, I, I can't even be bothered to read his bullshit. I do a quick skin, make a quick little funny, and then... <laughs> so funny. But yeah, continue. Yeah, it's just... Uh, and I talked to one of my friends yesterday that he's kind of a random friend that I have at my college, and he's a very interesting person. Um he's very outgoing and uh, will like spark up interesting conversations with me. And so it's always fun talking to him because I love having interesting conversations, but I'm not quite at the point yet where I feel comfortable being the one to spark him up. Um, and we talked a whole bunch yesterday, a lot about what's going on in my life right now. And um, he was asking me why I'm, I told him a little bit about my changes, about why I'm so open about my shitty feelings and my insecurity and my fears. And he said, why, why do you admit that? And I was like, well, I admit it because I'm no longer to the point where I want to shove it down. And I said, and I'm no longer, I want to be responsible for it instead of um, letting it dictate my whole life. And that's like, and when I'm in that mindset, it's so interesting to describe because so much of the time when I would get, when my negative feelings and fear would come up, it would be like a switch from kind of a reasonable mindset to it's like self-destruction and letting it be a reason that everything is going to fall apart. And now it's just like, when it comes up, I'm choosing to say it's, I'm feeling this way for a reason and I can't make it go away. I don't really want to make it go away, but I, I'm choosing to have faith that there could be something more. And that I'm, instead of saying, well, obviously that's the reason why everything's going to go to shit. I'm saying, why not try to do what's in my power to make it better and just let myself feel this way right now, basically. I think really all, put it into work. I think this yeah. is totally proof of just how much you've been growing and expanding. And I've noticed that, like, you're not really running and avoiding anymore. You know, not really. You're just, well, you've decided that, you know, you're just going to face things head on. And I just, I think that's really cool. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I've been really proud of you both, to be honest, because you both just making, like, so much progress just like leaps and bounds it's it's completely amazing and i absolutely love it and i love you both thank you you're welcome 
Oh, today is contrasty but good, man. <laughs> today is just so good. And I'm and I'm glad you volunteered to join us, Kristen. I, I know in, in the past you might not have because you might have been felt a feeling a bit triggered or whatever, but you faced it and you joined us and it was just oh it was, it was just really wonderful to have both of you and Max Egan on the same call. Like like really the like like the only thing missing was Rich, you know? I mean I think that's really funny because um, there's no way in hell that even a week ago I could have been this triggered and then not only, like, talked with friends at all, but, like, gotten on a call and then he spoke on a call. So I feel pretty good about that and just happy that I got to get in on it and hear what you guys had to say. Totally. It was such a topic. Yeah. Was- yeah. And, and I know that when, you know, the last time, um, you know, uh, when you met Max in person, like, you know, there there really <clears throat> wasn't a lot of time for you to to talk to him directly. And plus, from um, what I understand, the weather was also not exactly the, the greatest, and it just wasn't wasn't really the most perfect opportune day. Even even Max um said that the the weather was was kind of kind of crummy, and and he really didn't um you know um like that aspect of it. Yeah, the weather it was rainy, and it rained for like a majority of the time that the event was open and we um there weren't as many people for that reason and his time yeah. to speak was pretty late at night like not only had everyone almost already left because of the rain but his time to speak was at probably around nine o'clock maybe ten and yeah. the only people that were there really were people that were there going to listen to music which was cool yeah <clears throat> so I mean it's 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 a shame it's not going to be happening this year again. I know it was originally planned. Um I was kind of hoping the weather might be better this year for everything. So everything's just been it's it's just everything's been interesting and I I think 20 2017 is going to be a really interesting year for a lot of events and stuff not not only with with Max but just the world stage in general and and 2018 is going to be even more interesting I'm sure. So um, we've all we've all talked a lot, and um, you know between my my throat still being a bit eh, and um, you know Katerina, you woke up not too long ago and so on. Um, I think we're all all in agreement that uh, we should probably bring this to a full close and give things a rest. So thank you everybody for for listening. Um, you know check out uh, KaterinaRoy.com and TheCrowHouse.com and you know. Um, we already gave um, Kristen's uh, YouTube. Um, she's also at thinkingkristen.deviantart.com, although she doesn't use that that much because she just hasn't has had time. But you know, anyway, everybody, thank you for joining us. Love you all. Peace out. Catch you later. And everybody, have an awesome day, night, whatever it is on your part of the planet. Say goodbye, all. Bye. See you later, taters.